Well, it's a great mix here of um, sort of honoring the past of what made this region tick. <laughs> What was the life? I mean, this building, you know, exemplifies what was kind of the lifeblood of the economy. Um, and a economy doesn't exist in a vacuum. It becomes part of the culture and part of the community. And um, so, when when this closed and this because the industry collapsed, you know, it had incredible uh, ramifications for the community at large. And so, I think that's why projects like this have this sort of gr greater impact than just fixing up an old building. I mean, I think that there's a you know, I don't know if it's cathartic, but it's it, there's there's something about you know a rebirth or um, but one that is still respectful and rooted in where you came from, but open to interpreting that maybe in a different and new way is part of the promise of what this building uh, holds. I think. That adage, you know, form follows function. To me, it's 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 tangible in this building, and it's and it's very intentionally so. So we're sitting here in the atrium, and to, this will be a restaurant space. Behind is the shared use kitchen. Um, over here is the oyster bar and oyster processing, and it's transparent. All these spaces are connected. Looking into the kitchen and what is happening, what these entrepreneurs are doing in there, or what class is being held in there, and I think it helps to break down these barriers that kind of separates consumers with their, where their food comes from. Um, and I think that's really needed and really important. Um, and I think, feel like this building does it in, a, in an intentional way with the way it's designed. I mean, it's a big building at 60,000 square feet, but there's so many different levels where people can interact in this space from vocational training to like office space for established professionals and you know, everything in between. Um, right outside these doors here was um, an abandoned uh, concrete crushing facility. So we were approached to try to get acquire the property um, and the city had designs to turn it into a community park. You know, you're, you're imagining creating this great green space right next to this derelict building and, and not just a derelict building, one of historic importance um, and symbolic importance in Cambridge. So, um, you know, it didn't take long to connect the dots. Um, so we have always viewed the Packing House project and the adjacent Cannery Park as really symbiotic. The development partners, Cross Street Partners, um, we worked with them a little bit on where our office is now in Easton, which is in an old abandoned dry cleaning facility. Um, and they really are geniuses at these kind of old turn of the century industrial buildings like navigating the pretty complex mechanisms that that they're out there to renovate places like this they really go um, out of their way to you know make sure the building tells the story that people even when they walk in and see the new iteration you can you will still be able to feel the history and and imagine back in the day um, and I think they're really great at sort of documenting that and displaying that. So it does become sort of a, an, you know, not just a new building, but it's also kind of an educational opportunity and um, for the community to learn about what it used to be too. So I think that's, um, that's a pretty great balance. Mm -hmm.